Welcome students and parents of the Purdue Polytechnic School of Engineering Technology class of 2024. My name is Lindsay Hoagland and I am one of the academic advisors in the School of Engineering Technology and I am really excited to be able to tell you and your family about the School of Engineering Technology here at Purdue University. I have four colleagues who um, together make up the uh, School of Engineering Technology advising team. We advise students starting when they are pre-freshmen, before they actually uh, arrive on campus, through STAR, which is our admitted student program, all the way through to graduation. So it is a very exciting time, not just for admitted students, but for me, Tammy Lynch, Tamara Grohl, Susan Hawkins, and Cassie Pendleton, as we think about the students who will become our advisees for the next four years. Here in the School of Engineering Technology, we have a number of different majors that can all help you to get to where you want to go with your career. They range from audio engineering technology to automation and systems integration engineering technology to computer engineering technology and electrical engineering technology. There's a energy engineering technology, industrial engineering technology, mechanical engineering technology, mechatronics engineering technology, robotics engineering technology, and supply chain and sales engineering technology. If that seems like a lot of majors, it's because there is. The good thing is, they all have a very common first semester. Here in the School of Engineering Technology at Purdue University, we think of you having the best of both worlds. You have all that a Big Ten R1 research institution like Purdue has to offer, as well as the more uh, intimate setting of the Purdue Polytechnic Institute and the School of Engineering Technology, where your professors and your advisors will all know your name. Here at Purdue, you have a lot of choices for housing. You are not required to live one place or another, so our incoming students choose a variety of places to live. It might be in a residence hall or in a cooperative housing arrangement. It might be joining uh, Greek life and living in a fraternity or a sorority. Some of our students choose to live off campus in apartments and others choose to live at home. The great thing about Purdue is that the choice is yours and it is one that you are allowed to make. When you're on campus, there's great food and great um, opportunities to meet up with your friends for meals, coffee, snacks, and the like. Here at Purdue, we have world-class fitness op options and world-class facilities, and they're there for you to use. Whether it's the Co-Rec or the Tennis Center or even the two golf courses or the Aquatic Center or the trails that crisscross West Lafayette and Lafayette, there's a lot of different ways to get out, burn off energy, and then be ready to study again. When I think about students making the most of their time at Purdue, there's a lot of things that, that go into that and things that you should think about. Besides academics, in addition to your classes, there's other opportunities that you should be pursuing. So we want our students to go after those internships and co-ops. We want global and intercultural experiences. There's the opportunity for service learning and volunteering. We recommend that all students join a professional organization. And we, we encourage being involved both on and off of campus. Internships, co-ops, and research opportunities will allow you to explore your field, whether it's with the same company or through a co-op experience or with different companies, um, with different internships. Other students who are thinking about graduate school might try out research with a professor or over the summer. There's lots of ways to gain work experience or professional experience and we want you to try to 
try to do that while you're here. This allows you to see what you like, see what you don't like, and really be ready when you graduate to start your first career um, on the ground and running. Purdue has incredible study abroad experiences. Some students choose to go for just a week, perhaps over spring break, maybe on a manufacturing tour of Germany. Others choose to do a Maymester or a summer study abroad. Opportunities include doing an internship in London or in Sydney, Australia. Other students choose to go to Japan or to Wolf and Butyl, Germany to learn about sustainable energy. There's no right answer with study abroad, but there's so many ways to, to do it. Other students decide that they are ready to spend an entire semester or even a whole school year going to, different, uh, to a university in a different country. So it might be to um, a school in Spain or in Germany or in Australia. Typically, you don't have to speak the language. We have arrangements with schools in lots of different places where the courses will be taught in English and you can go and experience what it is like to be a college student in another country. But whether you go for a week, a month, or a semester or a year, students come back and say that these are one of the most powerful and enjoyable educational experience that they have. They grow as students and they grow as people. And so I would encourage you to think about doing that. We recommend that all students join two or three organizations. You don't have to join eight or nine like you might have done in high school. Two is usually sufficient to make friends, have some great experiences, and really develop per personally and professionally. We recommend that one of them be a professional organization, whether it is being a part of Grand Prix, lots of our mechanical engineering technology students really want to do that, or being part of the solar race car team or one of the, the car clubs. Other students join women in technology or any of the number of professional organizations that are around campus. We also encourage you to join an organization for fun. We also recommend that you join one organization just for fun, whether it's the Ski and Snowboarding Club, and no, we don't have any mountains in Indiana. The club actually goes out to the western U.S., to Colorado or Utah to ski during winter break and spring break. Whether you join that or you're a member of the marching band or one of the musical organizations, or perhaps you enjoyed being part of FIRST Robotics in high school and want to give back. Maybe you have Olympic aspirations and you can see two of Purdue's uh, quite famous Olympic medalists. Um, that would be an okay um, thing to pursue on the side as well. One of the great things that being at a school as large as Purdue is that there is a ton of opportunities to hear famous people speak and see really top performances. So in the last year, both Condoleezza Rice and the Blue Man Group and everything in between have come to campus. These performances are often free or low cost, certainly a lot lower than you would pay if you were in a larger market. Um, and they're really an opportunity to grow as a person, to hear some really powerful minds speak and perform for you. Now is a time in your life where you're not just choosing where you go to school, but you're also beginning to think about what's going to happen four years from now. What kind of career do you want? Where do you want to go? What kind of future do you imagine for yourself? And what major and what place will get you there? Whether you are interested in the communication industry or trains, planes, and automobiles, or if you really think you want to go into something healthcare related, majors in the School of Engineering Technology can get you there. We think of this as launching your future. So engineering technology programs have smaller size classes and a lot of labs. In these labs, you'll have a chance to really experience for yourself what you are learning in class, in lecture. We have award-winning faculty who are teaching classes, and student success is the primary focus. In engineering technology, 
the curricula is highly structured, which means that one class leads to another and then to another and to another. Our labs are full of equipment that are used out in industry and are sponsored by industries who want to hire our graduates. For students who are interested in majors on the mechanical to electrical continuum, we have mechanical engineering technology on the one side and electrical engineering technology with its majors of audio, computer, and energy on the other. And in between, we have three majors that combined elements of both, and those would be automation and systems en integration engineering technology, robotics engineering technology, and mechatronics engineering technology. We also have two majors that are interested in a little bit more of the business side of the engineering technology uh, continuum. In industrial engineering technology, students design solutions to improve processes and products and services and systems. They become project managers and operations managers. They le learn about lean and sustainable systems. So if you think about the flow of goods and services and people, they have to be managed and managed efficiently. You'll learn about Lean Six Sigma and economic and risk analysis and how to manage facilities. On the supply chain and sales engineering technology, you might be someone who can sell something to anyone and want to go into industrial sales. You might want to handle small details and ERP systems such as SAP and Eclipse. You might be interested in auto identification and data capture technology. These are majors that are really good for people who want to combine both the technical and the economic side of things. Starting salaries. We're very proud of our starting salaries. These are all self-reported and they come from our students as they graduate. Um, for May 2018 graduates, which are the last data that we have, the average starting salary for all electrical, industrial, and mechanical majors was above 60,000, with the highest being WT at 63,000. All of these are very respectable incomes and will vary depending on whether you choose a large company, a small company, or whether you're on one of the coasts or in a small town. We have very good placement rate. For all of our students, it is above 85% and has been for the past 10 years. In May of 2018, we had a placement rate self-reported of 96%. This means that our students are finding jobs and going places, and we want you to be one of them. There is a large overlap between engineering and engineering technology. In fact, most of our students will be placed as engineers as they head into the work world. As you can see, the most common starting job titles all include one word, and that word is engineer. So the degree is engineering technology, but the career is engineering. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about the transition to Purdue. In high school, most of the knowledge was presented in class. In fact, probably 80% of the knowledge was presented by the teacher. Here at Purdue and at other institutions, that number drops to 20%. Most of the learning will go on outside of class as you do pre-labs and post-labs and problem sets and really learn the material yourself. Only 20% of the material will be covered in class. The advisors in the School of Engineering Technology got together and came up with what we consider the secrets to success. In other words, how can you be successful once you transition to Purdue? First and foremost, go to class. Second, turn in every assignment on time and manage your time wisely. Read your Purdue email each and every day because professors, advisors, and the university will be sending you lots of information that's really important to your Purdue email address. It is important to establish study groups, people that you can work with on your classes. You teach them, they teach you, and you all benefit. 
Go to office hours when you don't know the answer, when you think that the professor can help you. Make a connection to Purdue. Make sure that Purdue is now your home, not your high school. It is really important that you make connections and friends within your major and at Purdue so that you want to go to class and you want to do well because it's hanging out with your friends. When you have a question, when you don't know how something is working, you can always consult with your advisor. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, we're going to be your advisor starting from before you arrive to when you graduate. Last but not least, use university resources. Most of them are free, and we're going to always direct you to free resources first that allow you to be successful. Some of the free academic resources are best academic support, the physics help room, the math help room, the chemistry help room. There's lots of places on campus that offer free support. We want you to use those first. So if you have decided that you are ready to accept your offer to become a member of the class of 2024, what do you do? First, accept your offer. The deadline is June 1st, extended just for 2020. If you know you want to come, just go ahead and accept early. Next, your $400 deposit is due at the time of accepting your offer. Once you have paid your deposit, you can register for STAR, which is the Summer Transition Advising and Registration Program that we put on every summer. Once you have paid your deposit, that is the time when it becomes necessary to start reading your Purdue email every day. You'll be getting lots and lots of information from Purdue, from the residence halls, from your academic advisor, and this is information that you need to know. STAR is a program for admitted students and their family. It stands for Student Transition Advising and Registration, and it allows students to come to campus, meet their advisor, learn about lots and lots of things that are going on and important for you to know, and you will submit a request for your fall classes. STAR is only held on week weekdays during this range, and there is a virtual STAR for those students who can't physically attend. But I would recommend that if you possibly can attend to go ahead and sign up for your star date. Three days prior to your star date, you will have to complete your star checklist, including the student information form. That form helps your advisor begin to get to know you, even before you've arrived on campus. And again, check your at purdue.edu email address for information from your advisor. Boiler Gold Rush is held the week before classes. This will allow you to come to campus, make a lot of new friends, learn where all your buildings are and your classrooms, and begin to really learn about Purdue traditions. You'll learn about university resources and the layout of the campus, and so when classes start you feel comfortable and confident. There are alternate orientation programs for students who are involved in band, marching band, Purdue Athletics, and ROTC, but most students will be attending Boiler Gold Rush. Here are some links that will help you with your next step in becoming a Purdue Boilermaker. And if you have any questions, you feel free to reach out to one of the academic advisors listed below. Thank you very much for spending some time with me and learning about opportunities in the School of Engineering Technology. We really hope that you will choose to come to Purdue so that we can meet you and help you achieve your goals. As we like to say, the future is yours, grab it.